There was a time when racing games were limited to a car or a truck. Four wheels, an engine, and a strip of pavement or dirt road. While they were fun and entertaining, you were still stuck to realistic racing in realistic environments. There was a time when most gamers were satisfied, but there were a few who weren't. A few who dreamed of pushing the boundaries of what was considered racing. A few who would change and reshape the racing genre forever. A few who just happened to work for Nintendo. Considering how many racing games have been made, and how many franchises are associated with those games, if you ask any gamer, name top three racing franchises of all time. Most would probably say Cruising USA, Gran Turismo, and Need for Speed. I have a slightly different type of answer, and I know damn well there are those of you out there that agree with me. I'd say Gran Turismo, San Francisco Rush, and F-Zero. There's always going to be classics like Rad Racer, Excite Bike, Jet Moto 2, Fucking roller side, hell yeah! Back on track. F Zero really single handedly created the futuristic racing game. One of the seminal launch titles of the Super Nintendo here in North America, F Zero was developed by Nintendo's famed EAD the geniuses behind Metroid and some of Nintendo's biggest franchises. Released in 1991, F-Zero easily went on to become a player's choice, indicating it sold over 1 million copies and is still fun to this day. There are story elements present in the manual, but strangely in the game they're absent. Basically, in the 26th century, which means it's even further in the future than Star Trek The Next Generation, you're in a futuristic society where F-Zero is the top money-making event. You can choose between Grand Prix, Time Trial, or Practice modes. It always sucked because you only have access to the Night Circuit in Practice mode, when really you needed it to practice on the Queen and King circuits. You race against three other hovercrafts across several tracks per circuit. The four available crafts are the Yellow Fox, Blue Falcon, Green Mongoose, and Fire Stingray. I always pick the Fire Stingray since it has the highest top speed, and its poor acceleration is easily negated by having another racer run into the back of you. Never before was there such a sense of extreme speed, with speeds approaching nearly 400 miles an hour, even though the gauge is in kilometers an hour. Utilization of Mode 7 graphics is tubular in this game and really is one of the first examples to show it off. The soundtrack is incredible, and along with Mega Man X, is one of my top five favorite SNES selections of music. Who doesn't remember jamming out to Mute City? Or Big Blue? or Port Town 2. Or Silence. Nah, Silence sucks, fuck that. The tracks vary in difficulty, with harder tracks just being remixed versions of easier ones. Along the way you'll run into helpful as well as hurtful items. Every time you complete a lap, you gain a single boost, which you can use at your discretion to propel yourself forward at nearly double your max speed. You can have a max of three. There's also speed arrows which do the same thing. Jumps, spinners, gravity bars, sand, water, or what I think is supposed to be water, and lastly drone racers. Oh, and you have the energy strips as well that restore your craft's energy level. Back to the drone racers. There are CPU controlled crafts that are basically there to fuck you up and be annoying. 
I tend to run into the back of them a lot, but you also have the flashing drones that explode if you touch them. On a select few tracks there are also shortcuts. Usually they're done by hitting a booster, then using a ramp to fly over a section of track to another spot. I have no clue if Nintendo intended them to be shortcuts, but they work nonetheless. If I can just get the fuck over there! Okay, I'm not pulling your guys' leg. This is possible. Get over there! Get over there! Alright, there we go. We made it. Probably the most well-known is in Port Town 2. Done by boosting over the pit to your extreme right. This was the starting point, and over the next 15-something odd years, there would be numerous releases on console and handheld systems. F-Zero will always be remembered as one of the greats, especially if you grew up with the SNES. May it live forever. Thanks for watching. Go check it out.